But this is so that when you're wearing it and you have the weight of the rest of it on, it's more comfortable around your ears instead of just a piece of yarn. Just to let you know, I have figured out how to start the recording on this. I missed the first couple of minutes, but I've got it, I've got it recording now. Okay, awesome. Thank you, Gomez. And um, if you need anything, I'm Izzy. And if people can drop their, their SCA name and local group into the chat, I can make sure the, the list gets to the, the academics folks for, for school credit. I have already done so. Awesome. Okay, so which one's Eliza and which one's Marguerite? This is Eliza. Okay. Hi, Eliza. Are you having fun? Yet? Not yet, probably, but soon. Did you do the other class today? She was taking a nap. Ah. I was also taking a nap for the last little while. <laughs> I did that as well. So what kind of a beard would you like to make, Eliza? Do you want to make like a big long beard? Just a mustache? A goatee? A short beard? You should do a beard like Gomez. There you go. <laughs> she might be a little dubious about this beard thing. It's okay. It's just for play. Okay. Let's see how this goes. She didn't wake up very long ago. Oh, so. uh, okay. We'll see. We'll see how it works. You don't have to make a beard. What if we make a braid right now? There you go. We could make Viking braids instead of a beard since you're the one who came. It'll be lots of Viking braids. <laughs> but like, what's you know. this? Hey, do you want to learn how to do it? We'll see what happens. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's okay. If you wanted to make Viking braids, you could do that and just make them lots thicker. The same thing that you're doing, but just okay. um, start with, you know, 10 pieces of yarn instead of three. So that the braid becomes way thicker than the one I did. And then leave the loop in it, and you could use hair clips to clip them into her hair. I was going to make a Fu Manchu one today.
How did the rest of the classes go today, Master Gomez? Um, they've been going pretty nicely. They've been going pretty nicely. Uh, I've, I've set in on. I, I did one, and I, I've set in on a couple of others, and they've been they've been going pretty smoothly. The, Good. Um, I'm I'm pleased with the the Zoom experience so far from from the administrative side. That's great. The the Facebook Live interface w is is a little sketchy yet, but. Yeah, that was the only thing I thought about court was that if they didn't, if they, I didn't know whether any of them were kind of watching it on the Facebook Live, so they had any idea that it was kind of cutting in and out like that. I, I don't think they did. I think it was like Facebook echoing a Zoom broadcast, so they weren't sure until they okay. up in the chat and saying, oh, by the way. Yeah, by the way, I didn't hear uh, half of it. <laughs> I didn't hear Angus at all. I heard uh, Morgan say goodbye. I think I missed Luxolin completely. So yeah, it was just kind of in and out, but. That's the only thing about those Facebook Live things is I've done those a couple of times and you don't know when it stops. Sometimes it just yeah, stops. The one thing about doing everything on Zoom or virtual like this right now is you know, every other May event is usually colder than cold weather here in Arnhold. And of course, we have a perfectly nice, warm, sunny day outside. Exactly. Well, Angus was doing his class from, from like out in his backyard. You could hear the birds chirping and stuff. And I know, it was awesome. Bowl. And kids squealing. And Yeah, I had to ask my husband to quit mowing so that you could actually not hear that through the window. But Yeah, um, I uh, am a member, uh, friends with Darbuka, and they've been trying to do some live jam sessions on Thursday nights through Zoom. But what we figured out is it has to be pretty loosey-goosey because of everybody's all over the country, and there's a lot of lag stuff going on. There's some specific setups in Zoom that you can change to help the, the lag and the whatever Zoom does to compress the sound, you can take that out so that it works a little bit better. But we, like the stringed instruments sounded a lot better playing together than any of us trying to play drums together because there was just too much. We, it was pretty funny. They had me just play a, a metronome beat and everybody clapped. And it was pretty funny, like, watching it. I couldn't watch and play at the same time because... It, it sounds like one of those things where, like, pre-recording and then have somebody edit it together afterwards. You know? Yeah. They were trying to do it kind of just like a get-together because, you know, it's a social thing and everybody jam, but they kind of they had to take it back down to maybe only two or three people play at, at a time and everybody else just mute your mic and play along at home and have a drink together because it just there's a lot of kind of weird and and mine seemed to be worse which is because you know i'm way out in the boonies and oh, yeah so um but you know it was pretty interesting because you know i i'm in montana and there's some people in arizona there's some people in dc there's some people it's just pretty interesting gotta eat it if you're not gonna eat it throw it away I've seen a few bands do some do some songs they put on YouTube or something like that, but I, they're like big name bands that I think have have a, a bit more in the bank for for synchronization stuff. Ah, yeah. I would think oh, that yeah. Um, the stuff that I've seen that worked best was like it was on Zoom, but but like what you were saying is one person would play it and then somebody else must play with it and record it. Yeah. And pass it on. It all together for the final product. Yeah, because I don't understand how they're doing it. There was one I saw that was four female drummers from all over the world and it was amazingly well done. And they all, you know, they're doing the same hand movement that's at the same time and, but it ha it was edited together after the fact for sure. It it looked like it was live, but it was like there's no way that there ones in Seoul and ones in the states and ones in Iran. You know it. 
Yeah, maybe if I had more money to spend on technology, it, it might be better, but none of us have that, so. Yeah. You can bring me a hedgy. Did we lose Eliza completely? We might have. Who knows? Bring you a hedgy. I'm trying to my fingers because I have two kids. There goes my stapler. So do you want to try to make her just some braids instead? Oh, I'll figure something out. I'll probably still end up doing a beard or something and then Okay. See how, see how into it she is afterward. <laughs> sometimes you never know. The naps are, they wake up happier and sometimes it's takes a while but certainly if they don't have one it is not good <laughs> like, that's yeah. always guaranteed in our case that's how mine were too my old dog come here my dog came to visit hello what was that Oh, my dog opened the door. That's a, such a smart puppy to open the door. Yeah, it just wasn't quite latched all the way. And he's 95 pounds of nosy, so. So if you want to still do the beard, let me know when you get long enough to Wrap around to tie off so that you have a loop for an ear. Okay. And then like a cross and wrap around to tie off for a loop for an ear. Like that. Yeah, okay. Not quite there. And the, I posted the instructions that I found that I kind of modeled to do mine with um, no. it's on um, the youth happenings page and it's also okay. um, on this event page and it says um, how to make a dwarven beard and um, it talks about sewing the loops on but I think you can tie them on with the loose ends just as easily either way that works You just don't want it to be able to slip so that it's pulling on your ears all the time. You gonna learn how to make a beard, Phoebe? Now you were saying that you had there's mul you have multiple patterns a dwarven beard and a viking beard no i kind of just um i use that pattern that i posted that's a dwarven beard that's sort of the basis for how i started doing it but then when done this a couple of times with kids we've gotten other ideas of just kind of how you attach the mustaches or how you attach the beard and you can do different things so the one that's on there has big long um, dwarf beard with big thick braid in it and then um, I posted a picture of um, I made one for Jermaine the first time I did it and hers is big and blue and fluffy and huge okay. just a just a beard like from the chin only so it's just kind of um what i was saying is 
if you think about just the look of what kind of beard you want, you could do different things with it. You don't have to have the beard like this one. I went with um, more of a skin tone because I was thinking about doing something like more of a Fu Manchu. So I have skin tone, and then I actually have black that I'm going to use for the mustache okay. part. And then when you're ready to tie it off, you just do another loop? Yeah, just do another knot down there. And then you can cut that loop on the other end either way. But then you have those loose ends that you can use to tie off the loop for around your ear to figure out where that's going to go to. Get her, Phoebe. <laughs> So I cut mine off with some extra length, and I'm just pulling a really good knot into this on the end so that I have a knot on one end with loop either or loose ends and a knot on another end with loose ends. And then I'm going to take that, pull it around, and figure out where I need to have it so that I could put that on and off my ear. Now, and, and and I see how you're you're doing this with making you know uh, with braiding. Would these be easily attachable to like the cloth masks that we're having to wear right now? Yes, um, and and you could probably get away with not braiding it and just use a single string. If you were getting the things I was going to ask about too, yeah, because that would yeah. be awesome. Well, and that was one of the reasons why I thought of this activity is because I was trying to think of something that people might have not have to go look for supplies, and it might be a little bit topical, and the kids might be more apt to wear their masks with the big beard on top of them, maybe. So that was kind of yeah, but but I think you definitely could do that. Um. Why, you know, not knowing where we're going to go, you know, once, you know, the social distancing becomes smaller, I wonder if this would be something that would help us uh, with getting events more uh, back to being open, you know, if we have to mask and whatnot, so. I believe so, yes. In fact, um, Praxilla had posted something today that she's actually looking at medieval face coverings so she can make medieval looking masks but so um, once you tie that on this can either be part of your this left over here can either be part of your um, beard or I'm gonna cut this off because mine is gonna be a mustache um, if you're gonna want a beard and a mustache you will want to braid another piece that will go like you will tie off here and it will come down around your chin for the mustache thing to go around your your mouth so you have to braid a separate piece for that or it's it might even be better to do the longer piece on your chin first and then a shorter piece across for your mustache um you can um Figure out a way to do this, and you could actually, uh, you know, braid in between here and here too to make a full beard. I mean, basically, the the braided thing that we're making now is the basis for all the hair that you're going to put onto the beard. So wherever you want to put hair, you have to have something to attach the other strings to. As the thing. does that make sense? Okay. Actually, the zoom is helping because I actually kind of started to have a mirror, which is why I keep pulling my gray hair out of my ears. Uh -oh. 
And Elise, where do you play out of? I'm Arnhold. Okay. I've just been kind of quiet the last couple of months as uh, I just stepped down as Sinish Hall, so. Oh, well, I understand that then, yes. Yeah, you got to take a deep breath after stepping back from that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually, I actually, Varya told me uh, I should participate more, apparently. <laughs> you need a break after stuff like that. There's a, yeah, I did it for two and a half years, so. Yeah, there's a there's a deprogramming period of time there. But then I get Craig hitting me up saying, hey, you want to work on some scrolls? Well, that's because if he knows that you <laughs> don't know how to say no... Well, welcome back. Thank you. It's only been a couple months. Okay. Ashley, where are you at? I'm in Salt Lake. Oh. Craig, are you working on braiding? I think he's just watching. I'm watching. I don't have the, the the stuff with me right now, but that was one of the things I was interested in making sure this got recorded in because it seems like a fun kind of thing I could play with it. So. It's pretty simple. Um, kids did it last time. You know, the younger they are, they 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 tend to lose interest a little more. But the when we made them at we made it at a Bronze Helms Investiture, I think it was. And uh, when Floki was on the thrones, and people walked around with beards on all day, and it was pretty fun. It seems pretty entertaining, and yeah, it's a, it's a fun thing to, to, to play with. Yeah. This is my first attempt at something more fancy like a Fu Manchu, so we'll see. So... The beard part I can, I can, I can grasp in my head, but I'm curious is how, how the mustache is going to form. So... Basically, we're doing, I think it's called a half hitch. I should have looked it up, like a macrame half hitch. So this is where, now this one's going to get, you know, if you're doing a beard, you just pretty much start from one end and go to the other, right? And put it, make it as thick as you want to. This one is going to be a little bit more technical because I want it to start. Go horizontal and stuff. Right, here, yeah. And I want it to start over and have like a an empty spot here right the other thing is now when I what I did was I made myself um, again the thought is is that you're gonna always fold your pieces in half so I made quite a few lengths I figured out folded in half a little bit longer than I'll probably want because like a real beard I can trim it to shape it so I'm just gonna I just hacked off quite a few because they're going to fold in half. That's as long as I'm going to want them. And then to attach them, I'm going to start maybe right here. And we're basically, you just take a loop. Fold it, pull the ends through the loop on the other side. So you're just hitching it down onto there. Sort of like when you just put a tassel on or something like that. So it's just one hitch onto there. So again, fold it in half. And it's just basic um, a macrame starting stitch or something. I think it's called a half hitch, but I'm not sure. Very untechnical. So I take it from behind it, and then I just pull it down, pull the, 
pull the loose ends back up through the loop and then tighten it down and pull it tight. And then you can pull them together. Now for this one, because I wanted it to be like a Fu Manchu, I'm actually using um, embroidery floss and I'm going to play with waxing it so that it's a little bit more stiff. Um, you get the snidely whiplash with it. Yeah, yeah, you could do that one. Um, the other thing that the um, video or the, the attachment talks about is like starting with a, now on theirs, there is a Viking or the Dwarven one, and they actually just take a bunch of, of yarn like this and tie it on to the middle and then just kind of drape it across and tie it here. Okay, um, and then you can also, with these, you could take several of these at a time and do it. You don't have to just do one at a time. And then, like with the one I made for German, um, I used more of a loose weave um, yarn so that hers, you know, once I got it on there, I pulled it all apart so hers became just this big, bushy, uh, wiry looking beard. So if you want that kind of a look, that's where I was saying, you know, materials will make a difference as well. Um, but you know, this is kind of a, a modeled color as well as um, if you took that apart, it would be a very, very fuzzy beard as opposed to like this is going to be very fine and nice instead. And so, yeah, that, that dwarf one that's attached has like a big bunch of yarn this way and then attached at the nose and attached over here for like a big, huge... It kind of hangs down in draperies from there. Well, that like is the nose and then underneath for this part, they're attaching it this way for the bottom part. And then they must have um, put four or five, three or four different layers um, really, really stuffed it in really tight because then they have some that's draped and then some that's braided in the front of it, sort of like the Vikings would have like part of their hair braided. You can put beads in there. I was watching a video yesterday actually about a, a guy with a big fluffy beard putting beads in and his trick to put the beads up here you know pull them up it was pretty interesting take the take the bead and you put the loop through the bead this and then you put your beard down through the loop and then pull the string through and it'll pull your beard through the bead but um, they put rubber bands on first that was the trick I was always wondering how do you make it stay there so there's a little teeny rubber band on there first and then they do that so the rubber band kind of holds the tension of the bead I think because I've tried to put beads in my hair and I run out of time and patience So again, again, um, if this one I want to be kind of fine and a little bit more organized, I would say. But if you want it just bushy, you can take you know several of these and loop them on together at the same time and pull that through. And that saves you lots of time, and that will get you thickness with the beard as well. So if you look at the difference between doing, you know, several together in one bunch, whereas this is one at a time, 
So it just kind of depends on what, you're, what look you're going for. You can also go back through this with two different kinds, two different colors, um, switch off the colors, go back over the top of this with the thicker one and just pull it between them every once in a while. So there's a few ways you can do it. Faster would be obviously the thicker. Now the only thing that you do want to watch is when you're putting them on, if you are going to do it one at a time the way I'm doing it, and even if not, every time if you put it on and off like I'm doing and check it, you want these loops. I don't know if you can see this very well, but the loop looks different from one side to the other because of the way it's hitched on there. So one side has yeah, the front of the loop and the other one doesn't. Yeah, and you want to make sure that that is the same way all the way across. That makes sense. So it, you want to be consistent with that so it's nice and smooth. But, you know. Right, right. And, and either way you're going to wear it doesn't matter, just so that they're all sort of the same. Unless you do that big bushy one, then once you get that bushiness, you're not going to see that as much. But for mine, that might be something obvious because I'm not going to put very much on here. I'm just going to do a thin one. So I want to make sure that every time they go on the same direction. And now that I said that, now I, I'm going to second guess myself about putting it on. The, the one thing about that method too, though, it's really easy to take it back off and do it again. Until you really pull it and tighten it, it's not a knot by any means. What time is evening court today? Five or something. I'm sorry, five? So like when we're done? I think so, yeah. Okay. Pull the thing back up here. Yeah, five to six closing court, and then a little later on, around eight-ish, we're going to start up a couple of more rooms and do some, some uh, bardic and some, uh, some, some virtual cocktail hour. I think. Oh, nice. I'm supposed to be tutoring tonight. I haven't decided if I'm gonna bag that and well, join you or not. It's the virtual cof uh, uh, cocktail hour slash. How many birthdays do we have in Arnhold or in Artemisia today? Because we have Arlen, we have Sarah, mm -hmm. and someone else. Conlon's was like about a week ago. Yeah, which we My celebrated era. his. Yeah, see, that just sounds way more fun than working. So say screw work and then come play with us. <laughs> Or just have this up in a spare window. Yeah, the problem with that is is the same problem we have with this is too much uh, on my internet and I kind of have to have my internet speed for the working thing. Uh, yeah, that was one of the things uh, Arlen was was mentioning earlier. He, with with him in the backyard doing his thing and Diane in the house keeping an eye on on Freya, that they were they were kind of soaking their house's internet connection. <laughs> Yeah, that's what I told um, my son Therius was 
streaming something and I was getting ready to do this and told him he had to stop that for an hour because, yeah. All right. I'm going to try to put... Danny is in the hot spot the school gave us. Yeah, they... Their question was, do you have internet? And since ours was yes, we are using ours. And everyone in town is using theirs. So it's been less than good some days, especially weekends. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's my text messages. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, oh that's funny. eyes are waking back up. <laughs> that's funny. So I have, I, have, I have people commenting on the gift that I made for Christy that I got commissioned cool. to do. Nice. Yeah, that looks awesome. That is pretty funny. So if you, I don't know if you noticed me, but I just went ahead and did this with all the same lengths and then just kind of cut it with my scissors while it was on. Did you already put the slip note on it? Mm-hmm. Yep, they're already attached up there. So I attached them all, got it about the, the width that I wanted it, and then trimmed it. I might do it a little bit thicker. And then my thought was, I'm going to wax this a little bit and see if I can get it to be stiff. Sort of like an actual mustache. Now, with these type of beards, have you done like the uh, decorative beads on the end? Yeah, we. Um, you can do that. It, I mean, basically, it's just whatever your imagination is on them. Um, we did like the big, thick ones, and then take a couple braid just a little bit in the front and a bead that sort of thing whatever you want to do on them So I'm just putting beeswax on this like you would when you're embroidering. Just trying to get a big thick layer on there. Embroidery thread may not be the greatest medium for this. Not bad, probably needs to be a little thicker, but kind of the general idea.
so we probably we have about 10 minutes before court's supposed to start. Does anybody have any questions at all anymore? No questions here, but thank you. You're welcome. It's kind of just kind of a silly little thing, but I thought it might be kind of fun with masks, so. Meredith, you can say hi. No, it's, it's a good idea. I like it. Hey, Craig, did you? I'm sorry? I was going to say, Craig, did you see what I did? No, what? Ah, oh, nice. You got your little. I even got my, my plague rats. Got your wall. Oh, yeah. Can everybody see my plague rats? I've, I've got one floating around here someplace, but I can't find it. My husband has plague rats out at Halloween, so I have a couple. Nice. <laughs> well, Shelly was, Shelly was saying that she didn't have any rats, which is surprising. And uh, all away. well, I uh, took, a, took one and put it in her uh, gnome garden. Nice. Yeah, we have all sorts of actual looking like real rats that are out and snakes and stuff. And my husband just loves scaring all the little girls that come into the yard and little boys. And He has this, uh, this one witch that he hangs right by the front door and she'll moan and her eyes glow up. And these two little girls came up one day and one time and... They were just standing there with their mouth agape. And so he says, well, do you want to hear it? And so they said, yeah. And so he pushed the button and she started mowing and the eyes glowing. And they went shrieking and screaming out to their car. And their parents are out in the car with the doors locked, laughing at them. And wouldn't let them into the car. Oh. <laughs> Horrible. That's awesome. That's, awful. Oh, that's the entertainment of parents. Right? <laughs> thought it was great. Yeah, go see this guy. He's really fun. Come on, come on. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we we'll probably should get done so everybody can get to court. Since Is that just, now how is that? Is that the same again through Facebook Live? I'm not I, sure. I think they're trying something slightly different that might be a more reliable, but I'm, I, I'm not sure. Okay, well, um, hopefully we will see you all then and and uh yeah now that i'm you know garbed up and decorated up i kind of think i should have to go to the party later so hopefully i'll be there later well, we hope to see you thank you i've got the list of people so i'll get that to juliana for you okay thanks yeah is there a sign up for barter is it just kind of as you show up tonight i think it's just kind of as you show up okay but uh, uh, either Juliana or Angus is running that one. Okay. I think Juliana is running the room for that one. So she'd be the person to, to ping. Awesome. All right. Thank you guys for coming. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night, too.